Last Thursday, the Foreign Secretary, Dominic Raab, set out the criteria that the government says must be met before any major changes can be considered. But do our panel agree? Is this really what needs to be achieved before lockdown can be lifted? Joining us for this section is Dr Mike Tildesley from the University of Warwick, an expert in infectious disease modelling. Um, Dr Tildesley, are these the right things that the government should be looking at for scientists? First on this list, the, the evidence that the NHS can cope. I mean, this is really, really crucial. And this is one of the measures, really, uh, this is one of the um, reasons, really, that lockdown was put in place in the first place to ensure that the NHS was able to cope with the demand, with the increased hospitalisations um, and increased admission into ICU. Um, so that's extremely crucial that we can only really lift lockdown when we have confidence that the NHS can cope. Um, now, other measures that we need to think about are um, a fall in daily death rates and evidence that the number of cases is decreasing. Um, so the problem with just looking at the number of confirmed cases is that this um, is slightly muddied by the fact that testing is increasing. So as we increase the number of tests, um, we will, of course, find more cases. Now, what we're seeing at the moment, if we look at the data, is that um, the number of daily confirmed cases um, is levelling off. And there might be some evidence that it's starting to decline, but it's not declining rapidly. However, the number of tests is increasing. And that's why it's important to look at both daily deaths um, and confirmed cases. Also, looking at hospital admissions is also really important because there is starting to be evidence that the number of hospital admissions with COVID-19 is starting to decrease. And this is an indication that we may be able to start releasing lockdown. The final point on, your, on the list is the, the government say they want there to be no risk of a second peak. Um, now, unfortunately, this is a challenge because, of course, as we start to lift lockdown measures, we may see a resurgence in cases and there may be a risk of a second peak occurring. So it's extremely possible that um, as we start to lift measures, we may need to reintroduce them to stop the uh, risk of a second peak occurring. Sinatra, what would you say here? Um, I think that the only way that we would not get a resurgence um, of infection and death is if people have substantially acquired immunity already. I think a critical piece missing from this is that we need to measure levels of exposure. And if we're lucky, perhaps a more substantial proportion of the population will have been exposed than, than we So when you say we need to measure exposure, how could we do that on a mass well, level? Well, using these antibody tests, these serological surveys. Could it be done quickly enough? Because the next decision is in a couple of weeks. I think several groups, including ours, are trying very, very hard to get these tests up and running, and we have achieved a measure of success. We can certainly now process from 500 to 1,000 samples a day. Right, but how, how do you think the government should be approaching the question of easing the lockdown? I think we have to consider the costs of lockdown. Which whether, other costs do you mean? The economic costs, the profound costs to underprivileged people. Sir Paul? I think this is a very complicated issue. Let's, let's begin with one that um, I think is very important, which is appropriate testing at scale. Because I don't, think, I don't really see how we can manage post-lockdown without appropriate testing at scale. And um, I, I think at the moment we're straining, to be perfectly honest. I mean, we've had 100,000 um, promised in only a few days and we're only around 20,000 at the moment. By the way, it was never said clearly why 100,000 should be the right number at the end of April, which is something else I think that the government should um, um, consider. I mean, why was 100,000 the right number, apart from the fact there's quite a few noughts after it, so it may look quite impressive. But what we need to do is to have a real consideration of what level of testing we need and can we deliver it. And it isn't just a question of having laboratories that can do the testing. It's this getting the samples there and getting the information back. Getting just the IT in place to deal with this is not trivial. Deenan? We've got to remember that policy has changed over this period of time. Um, and until very recently, 
those being tested were those ill enough to come to hospital and need hospital admission, which is obviously a small proportion of all of those infected. Now that we, we, when we talk about testing, 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 that now means that we go into the communities that when you or I may be at home, have some symptoms, call 111, are told to stay at home, we would then be tested and our contacts traced. But it requires then a whole infrastructure for uh, contact tracing. And um, that needs to be built up now. Uh, um, and, and I think uh, the holistic view is that testing will link to will link to then reducing ongoing transmissions. So that's highly dependent on testing leading to that activity. Elizabeth, does, does testing have to go with contact tracing? In, a, in an ideal world, absolutely. And to do things properly, yes. Because as a virologist, virologist we know that the virus is going to stay in our community. So it's all about not letting get out of hand again. Not having your shooting up in terms of when in a way that we cannot cope. So ease the lockdown, expect that the virus will come up, but do not make a peek out of it keep it manageable, keep a lid on it. And therefore, you can go through waves, not peaks, manageable until we do get either a therapy or a vaccine. So, Mike, does that mean that what we are looking at is, is waves of lockdown? When we start to think about easing lockdown, what we need to do is make sure that that's incremental. So what we need to do is release a certain part of lockdown and then monitor the situation to see what effect that may have over the coming weeks upon the number of cases, whether we start to see a resurgence. If we start to see cases building up again and start to see um, NHS capacities being stretched, it may be that absolutely, yes, we may start to see some of those measures have to be introduced. So any, any release of lockdown, you're saying, must be staggered, must be staged in, 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 in increments and then studied for weeks before you can even consider another increment? Well, what we need to remember here is that um, we're dealing with a virus where the incubation period can be anything up to a couple of weeks. So it's very tempting. Let's say, you know, we were to release lockdown measures in two, three weeks time. A week after that, we may say, well, OK, cases are starting to decrease. And it's very tempting to think that that measure that we've just released actually didn't really have any effect. But unfortunately, it's going to take two, three, four weeks beyond the release of a measure for us to really have enough data to be able to have strong confidence that that particular measure has not had any the release of that particular measure has not had any negative effect upon the epidemic. So, Paul, um, I mean, what this means is that any idea of just lifting the measures the way they were brought in would be in the face of any scientific sense. I think it means exactly that. We, we, it will be a graded response, there's no question. We do need to have more data, frankly, about the biology of the virus, the the questions that have been uh, raised by others, before you can actually develop the uh, appropriate approach to releasing lockdown. Can I just ask Mike one more question on this? Um, <clears throat> Mike, are we looking at... Are we still looking at a situation in which easing the lockdown means that we copy what some of the Asian countries did, which was to have mass testing, contact tracing, probably through mobile phone data, and isolating those people who are vulnerable or who have the disease? Or, or is that model now... Is it too late for that model for Britain? Well, I think, I mean, the important thing is um, what we can learn a lot from what's currently happening in East Asia. Now, they are obviously several weeks ahead of us in terms of virus progression. So they already have eased a lot of their measures and are starting to put these systems in place. Uh, when we start to release lockdown, it is extremely important, as already been discussed, that we um, increase testing and contact tracing. Now, what's what's really important with testing is not only do we ramp up testing, but we appropriately target testing. And that's also extremely important. What we need to do is we need to identify um, individuals that may have symptoms and target them for testing and also carry out contact tracing for those individuals. It's important that we do that on a large enough scale and then put in place quarantine measures for those individuals that we do prevent or try to minimise the risk of a second peak occurring. So it's extremely possible that we ne may need to move to this model. But there is a capacity issue here because we need to make sure that we have the capacity to deliver that and to deliver on 
uh, and to be able to ensure that we can carry out enough tests and, as I said, appropriately target those tests to the individuals that really need them.